Unreal Engine 5.2 just released and together with it came the procedural content generation. You can see right here I can drag this around and it's generating trees and grass automatically for me. So I just created this in under 3 minutes if I really wanted to. My player can walk around and I can add static meshes across if I want to and really quickly just whip up this world. Now bear with me, the, the layout may change in future versions as developers announced, but most of it will pretty much be the same and we will cover the basics so you can easily recreate this one. First of all you need Unreal Engine version 5.2 or later installed. Then inside of Unreal Engine you go to Edit, Plugins. And look for the plugin here, Procedural Content Generation Framework. Make sure this box is ticked and maybe you need to restart the engine. When you have done that, I'm going to first create a landscape to show you this. So here under the modes, go to landscape and let's create this landscape for testing purposes. Then we go to content drawer, right click, look for PCG. This is a procedural content generation graph. Click on this one, give it a fitting name, hit enter and then drag this inside of your level. So this is the area that this will be in. So back here on the control, let's double click to open this one up. We get a bunch of nodes here, but I'll show you the basic ones. First let's make some room between those. First node we are going to add, so drag this off. Look for surface sampler. And instead of in, open this one up. We want this onto our landscape. So control hold to move the pin to landscape. Hit save. Right now nothing happened, but when I click here, and I hit D on my keyboard, you see this is in debug mode, and then I see the areas here where my uh, procedural content will be generated. What you can do then is increase or decrease this. For example, let's make this 10 times smaller. You can see the amount of dots changes, or I can set it back, and then I can change those. What I can also do from the out pin, I can transform points, so we need the points of this and we can choose an offset, rotate this, so let's rotate it between 0 and 360 so this can be rotated in any direction. The scale, maybe you want a little variation between for example 0.9 and 1.1, I'm going to show this later on. So now these are rotated in different directions, especially with the mesh you will see what happens then. Let's spawn in some meshes, so from here, static mesh spawner, click on this one and then connect this to the output. For the static mesh spawner I'm going to add in two trees, so click this one and here the mesh entries, one, two, because I'm going to add two trees, here in index one for example, here in the descriptor, the static mesh, so I already added two trees in this, so let's choose those O2. And in this index, let's choose this tree, and I hit save. And now you can see it spawned a bunch of trees, but this is very dense. So let's change this one. So in the surface sampler, let's make this 10 times smaller, hit save and see what happens. Okay, this is already way better. Or maybe something like this. Okay, and then you can see when I drag this around, there will be another seed. So this will be regenerated every time. Okay, you can also increase the scale where this may spawn. And if you want to, there is a checkbox right here, unbounded. Now make sure you save your progress before you do this because this will be in the entire landscape. So now I click this one and hit save. You can see the trees are added on the entire level. For tutorial's sake, let's disable this so we can continue working on these. Now, here in transform points, let's say the smallest tree can be 0.8 and the biggest tree can be 0.2. I already uh, set this scaling. You can also choose an offset. So let's say there are at least 20 centimeters inside of the ground for the trunk or something so it doesn't stick out. And you can hit save. And right now you can see there's a little variation in trees. So ex Especially when I exaggerate, so let's say it, uh, the scale max. By the way, let's uh, oh, let's keep the lock on. So let's say scale max something like five. Now this is not a good idea, but just to show you, then you can see you have some really big trees and also some smaller ones. But this is way exaggerated, just to show you. 
Okay, let's say 1.2 is fine. And then hit save. Okay. So you can add a bunch of trees here, but let's say I also want to add grass with different properties. So how we can do that? First of all, let's select those, hit C to comment and name this trees. Then control, uh, let's select those, control D to duplicate those. And select these, hit C on your keyboard and let's name this grass. The output in out and landscape once again in surface. But this time uh, let's uh, Go to the static mesh partner. Instead of mesh entries, let's add, uh, let's click this bin. We need one. Index zero, descriptor, and static mesh will be the grass clumps, for example. These ones right here, let's also reset them back to default. Maybe uh, my grass, I want them a bit bigger because the model is really small. And then a sampler, let's uh, set this back to default, point one. And then you can see. We have grass and we have trees in our level, but there are just a few grass clumps right here. So what we can do then, set this to 1, hit save, and there are more grass clumps. But watch when you say, for example, and this is back to 10, it doesn't really increase. So 1 is like a maximum for here, but what you can do then, the points extends. Instead of 100, let's decrease this to 10 for example, then hit save, and you can see there are a lot more uh, grass clumps like this. Let's try uh, 5 as a number. And you can see this is already looking way better. So this is how grass should be in the trees right here. By the way, um, I still here have this debug uh, one on here. So select this, hit D once again. So this icon disappears. And now we can see our trees like normal. And uh, you can see I added them 20 centimeters below. Okay, so this is what you can do. And then you can just copy those and add rocks for example and also play around with uh, with these points right here. But now I'm going to show you. Um, let's also add a landscape material to this. So I have my landscape select, clicked on landscape. I have some material prepared for this. So uh, I went to Quixel Bridge and I looked for some surfaces. The forest floor is the one that I used here. So let's drag this forest floor onto the landscape or have this one selected. Control space to lower this one and apply this right here. And then you can see the PGG together with the landscape material makes for some pretty fast and cool uh, levels, especially as an indie, it's pretty fast. So now when I have this one selected, you can see we move this around, it changes, or I can also alt drag this out. This might lag for you and have uh, two different parts of this. So you can have multiple of these instances. And you can create here as many of these PGG volumes as you want. But um, let's go back to here. By the way, let's, uh, let's save all before I do this. Because now I'm going to check unbounded for both of these. So my entire landscape is filled with grass and trees already. And then I'm going to hit save. And now you can see the unbounded effect is applied and is applied to entire landscape. So now when it can play, I can uh, test this out. Now this may lag at first, so uh, let's try this. And then you can get this great effect, but when you walk, you can see my player is bumpy. Why is this? Why? We need to fix the collisions of the grass, because I want him to go through the grass and not hindered by the grass. So here in my grass folder right here, static mesh spawner, uh, with this one uh, under here, we can see collision presets block all dynamic. Let's set it to no collision, then hit save and let's try again. And then you can see when we walk around, this error is fixed. This is a quick one that I want to show you. It's a pretty common error that happens. Um, this is just scratching the surface. These are just three nodes that we applied. There's a bunch of them, a lot of filters. But basically, it is graphing the surface where you want to apply in your points. Then you can transform them or add filters. And uh, with together with the meshes, there is an output. And there's a bunch that you can go through. And also here in the level, let me show you right here. There are a bunch of settings that you can choose right here. And also you can click each element individually and change them here and see the changes happen in real time. Don't forget to grab the free game dev toolkit in the description down below this video. You will get my free ebook on how to get better at game development, a free game design document to plan out your projects and a free tutorial series where you create a platformer game from scratch. And those who are hungry for more, I offer a sneak peek and overview of my new premium course, The Unreal Vault. 
where you learn how to create beautiful levels, create the game from scratch to finish, and how to set up boss fights and create dragon fights with different attacks, including fire breathing. So if this sounds like a good deal to you, I see you there. Click the link and grab your game dev toolkit now while it's still free.